Hi, my name is Amber Miller, and I've been a member of the uh, Creek Church. I'm going to the Ignite Women's Bible Studies for the past several years, and it has been one of the most fruitful Bible studies I've ever been to. I just love this group of passionate women, and I'm so honored to be a part of this project to have various ladies um, go over scripture that help us focus on um, this Christmas season um, and the coming of Christ, reflecting on how people felt for the first coming and how we feel now um, as we await in anticipation for the second coming of Jesus. Um, so my verses uh, that I'm going to cover are uh, found in Genesis 15, 1 through 6. And I just want to uh, kind of set the background because actually the first verse of my uh, section here, it says, after these things have happened. Well, what had happened? Um, this is a time when God had pretty much handpicked Abraham randomly, it would seem, uh, the way the Bible goes along, and starts to have this relationship with Abraham. Um, we remember the story of when Abraham and Sarah uh, were going to different lands, and, you know, Abraham going ahead, like he had to lie, not realizing that God had covered him, God had his back, and God continues to show Abraham the type of faith that he can have in God. And this last scenario, um, Abraham successfully rescues his brother Lot um, from these foreign kings that had taken him hostage. And he launched this attack with exactly 318 men. Um, it was very successful, and he credited that success completely to God. Um, and um, he meets Melchizedek. They have this moment where um, they worship God together, and um, you know they. You realize that God has blessed Abraham, and they have this connection. Um, so God then makes this agreement with Abraham. So I'll just read the verses. Um, After these things had happened, the Lord spoke His word to Abraham in a vision. Abraham, don't be afraid. I will defend you and I will give you a great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? I have no son. So my son from Damascus will give everything I own after I die. Which I find so honest, um, you know, when praying and talking to God. You can be honest. You can tell him how you feel, even if it's less than glamorous. I feel like as long as you're willing to be corrected by God, um, that's a perfectly good way to pray. Um, and Abraham says, look, you have given me no son, so a slave born in my house will inherit everything I have. Then the Lord spoke his word to Abraham. He will not be the one to inherit what you have. You will have a son of your own who will inherit what you have. Then God led Abraham outside and said, look at the sky. There are so many stars. You cannot count them. Your descendants will also be too many to count. Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord accepted Abraham's faith, and that faith made him right with God. In that last verse, um, 15, 6, uh, Genesis 15, 6, Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord accepted Abraham's faith, and that faith made him right with God. Uh, the New King, King James Version will have it say, uh, you know, and, and he counted that as righteousness. And I just find that to be so beautiful, so lovely, because this is pretty much the Gospels. Right here in Genesis 15, um, God is laying out his plan for salvation for humanity. This is the beginning of the genealogy. Um, this is the beginning of God choosing Abraham to be a people, his chosen people, uh, and blessing them. Right now, this is where the lineage of Jesus Christ is going to go through. And when Abraham at that time believed, believed in what was going to happen, it was counted as righteousness. And this is the same thing that applies to us today. When we believe in the gift that was given to us, Jesus, born as a son, born as a baby, um, through the virgin, um, and when we believe what Jesus came to do for us, to fulfill the law and to take on all of our sins. And we believe that it is counted as righteousness. And I just want to tie this in with Galatians. You know, Paul brings this up again because um, the Christians in Galatia 
we're starting to forget and lose sight of what saves them. So obviously this is something that Christians are susceptible to. This is a weakness that we have and the enemy plays off of it. We think that we can be good in our own works. We think we can somehow follow the law. Uh, not knowing that once we start down that path of making ourselves acceptable through the law, that we are held to it in its entirety, and we are cursed. And it says here, um, you know, uh, Paul is uh, convicting um, the Galatians, saying, did you receive the Spirit by following the law? Is that how it works? No, you received the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, because you heard the good news and you believed it. And then uh, Galatians 3, 6, the scriptures say the same thing about Abraham. Abraham believed God, and God accepted Abraham's faith, and that faith made him right with God. So you would know, so, so you should know that the true children of Abraham are those who have faith. The scriptures um, telling what would happen in the future said that God would make the non-Jewish people right through their faith. The good news was told to Abraham beforehand. As the scripture says, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who believed as Abraham believed are blessed just as Abraham was. But those who depend on following the law to make them right are under a curse. Because the scriptures say anyone will be cursed who does not obey what is written in the book of the law. So we are the children of Abraham. We are part of God's lineage when we have that same faith. When God tells us, this is my plan and this is how I'm going to save you. And he can see in our heart, there was really no spoken word at that point. Abraham looked at the stars and God saw in his heart that he believed it. And, uh, you know, that there's obviously a lot that there is for us to believe in this day. But God will see the way of things in your heart is between you and him. Um, and that is still required of us. It's required of us to believe. Um, and that's what is, makes us righteous. That's the only thing. Um, so I just think that is beautiful. Um, and it's, to me, tying this in with um, Christmas and how we can reflect on the second coming of Christ that this is, this is how God's laid this out. This is God's plan, it's not man's plan. Um, and when we believe that, we will be considered righteous just like Abraham was. So that's pretty much all I have. I hope uh, there was a few uh, pieces that ring home with you. I just love these verses. I love this passage, passage of scripture. So much hope in it for me. So Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to your families.